balls. Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. And pretty much what all traders are going to be looking at now for this week is the start of US earnings season, which kicks off today with Alcoa that comes at the end of the session in the US. And I think there is an expectation that the, uh, the results of many US firms are not going to be as, uh, as strong as previous years where they've beaten expectations by a decent amount, though the markets may end up surprising. Um, but Alcoa is certainly the one to, to start with uh, later on today. Um, most of, for the rest of the week and for the next couple of weeks, you're going to be getting a lot of the biggest US companies coming out with their earnings, a lot of some of which come at the start, some of which of the, of the US session, some of which come after the bell when the markets are already closed. So we've been wanting to keep an eye on your positions overnight. And uh, if you're trading any indices that are, are, are closed over the, uh, over the night time, for example, the Germany 30 is always quite popular. Um, you'll want to think about potential gap risk. If a couple of big um, Dow products end up missing expectations by a significant margin and the markets tank, or on the opposite side, if they come out much better than expected, considering the markets expect them to be a little bit weaker than, uh, than, than usual, um, that can have quite big on, knock-on effects on something like the Germany 30, which can be uh, quite temperamental with some of that gap risk as well. If you're trading the, the UK 100 or the US 30, which trades 24 hours, it's, it's not so bad, but just be careful for some of those European indices that do have a closed time as well. But that's pretty much what's going to be dominating the, uh, the news items for, uh, certainly for this week anyway. Uh, let's go straight on to the technicals and look where we are. I'm starting off with the US 30 as ever. Okay, so pushing on here, you'll be able to see that uh, the US 30 has, um, has kind of retreated a little bit. Very volatile session there on Friday. It was much higher than getting pushed back down towards the end. And then we are hugging that 21 period SMA. 66% of CMC market clients are currently short. We do have a sell signal on the slow stochastic, finally. And the MACD histogram is obviously turned negative. Now we're going to see it's a little bit of a grind grind lower. Certainly the tips of these candles are indicative that there is selling pressure um, and Friday's candle is quite negative from a technical analysis perspective. Moving on to the UK 100, we're still trading within this range. Uh, very interestingly, a very different formation to what the US 30 had. So we had a, actually a very positive day there on Friday. Um, we've had a little bit of a, a sell off this morning, just tiny, tiny little bit. 63% of CMC Marks clients are currently short, but look, this potential resistance level is kind of significant at 62.20, so do keep that in mind. The other technicals are relatively neutral, if I'm honest. Moving on to Japan 225, uh, and it's really struggled on the back of that resurgence in the Japanese yen. We'll have to be looking at Euro dollar in a second. We've almost got a bearish a death cross in the moving averages. 86% of CMC Marks clients are currently long. Decent Friday, off from the lows. Um, we actually sold off a little bit further again today, but it's pushed back up higher. We're way, way off that 16,384 potential resistance. You can, we're not quite in the middle, but we're not that far off. Other technicals are um, relatively neutral. The MACD histogram is slowing, which might be showing a little bit of uh, slowdown of the momentum of the move down, which is not that surprising when you've got that big green candle right there. Uh, but it's all about the Japanese yen for this Japan 225. So let's go ahead and have a look at this. Um, I was speaking to one of my colleagues earlier on today who said that there was a color, coloration um, between dollar yen um, and the UK 100 and the US 30, sorry, where if we had a 1% drop in the value of dollar yen, that actually translates to actually a 0.8% drop. It's actually the S&P actually, now that I think about it, the S&P 500. Um, so that should be quite an interesting relationship to think about. The more that dollar yen drops, that actually does have uh, a, a correlation to uh, the US markets as well. Obviously, Japan being the world's third biggest economy, it does not an effect. But as you can see here from dollar yen, um, it's, uh, it's it actually is a little bit all over the place as ever. It's trying to push up higher and then getting pushed right back down again. We are about halfway in between two ranges. 105.44 uh, is that next potential support. And I did read that Kuroda uh, had said that currency intervention might be necessary. And what that does is, you know, it's all words right now. They do have a history of having done this before, um, but sometimes they just try and use the threat of intervention to try and stop the, um, the kind of the, the bears taking complete control of dollar yen, uh, but doesn't seem to be pushing back. You know, they're the calling his bluff right now. Uh, you know, people were going to have stops and everything else, but if, if there is currency intervention, you certainly know about it. Um, but what tends to happen is you get this big spike higher, 
but then over time the, the markets end up winning anyway. So this will go whichever direction the markets want it to go and not the direction that central bankers want it to go, unfortunately. So 77% of CMC market clients are currently long, so they're hoping for a move to the upside. Um, let's see if they'll be disappointed. So moving on to crude oil West Texas. Um, it's very volatile, you know, it's gone through this massive sell-off phase, then all of last week been pushing up higher, We're getting quite close to 40 odd dollars again. 71% of CMC clients are currently short. They're obviously hoping that we don't break these fresh highs here. So anything, if you break over $41, that would be a, a, a significant level, a breakout for, uh, for West Texas crude. Uh, but let's see if the, uh, if the bears take control again. And then moving on to gold, gold as ever, all over the place, doesn't, this head and shoulders formation could still be completely forming. Uh, it's all about US interest rates still. Janet Yellen, obviously very dovish, other members of the Fed, uh, a little bit more hawkish. Uh, let's see who wins out. And then moving on to Euro dollar and GBP USD, uh, the Euro is still getting a little bit of momentum. Uh, Gap higher this morning, um, but it's, it's not really doing a huge amount. As we get closer to one spot, 14.89, uh, it'll be interesting to see how that goes. You can just see by the long leg of candles here that there's a war going on between the buyers and the sellers. So that should be interesting to get the result. This, this kind of consolidation with long leg of candles, it will break out one direction soon. Uh, with 83% of CMC Marcus clients currently short, they're obviously hoping it's not going to break through that potential resistance level. And then finishing up with GBP USD, and uh, the sterling is not really doing a huge amount, to be honest. It looks to be one spot 41.29 potential resistance. And if we then quickly have a quick look at uh, the market calendar, see what other information is due out apart from uh, the start to earnings season. There's already all the information out um, that's due today. Uh, and if we fast forward on to Tuesday, uh, we've got uh, CPI for Germany, CPI for the UK, and then Wednesday trade balance de details from China and retail sales and petroleum updates from the US as well. Well, guys, that's it for me right now. Very good luck with your trading and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next. Thank you very much and goodbye.